It is one of my favorite times of the year. It is time for the Genetically Modified Organisms Lab. So that really answers my first question. What are GMOs? They are Genetically Modified Organisms, GMOs for short. Any genetically modified organism is an organism that has been modified, so it has had genes added to it, generally from another organism. In our case, we're gonna be looking at genetically modified plants. So we're looking at a gene from Bacillus thuringiensis. Um, we call it BT for short, because that's a mouthful. And that gene from that bacteria kills corn borers and silkworms. And so it's a great gene that you can add to plants to act as a pesticide without having to spray pesticides like from a plane all over a field um, that can get into the food chain and go up the food chain and get magnified. So by adding this gene to the plant itself, it's going to kill only the insects that are feeding on those plants. Um, of course they can develop resistance and that's a whole other issue that we don't have time for today. But that gene is engineered. So the organism is genetically engineered and the gene itself also has to be engineered. So what does that mean? It means that it needs to be changed in such a way that it is actually transcribed in the new organism. So it's going to need a new promoter and that promoter in most plants um, is going to, well, promoters in general, turn the genes on. That promoter for plants is from the cauliflower mosaic virus. It also needs a terminator, and in this case, we're using an enzyme terminator, or we're looking for an enzyme terminator from Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Um, again, another mouthful. We see that one or both of these changes to the BT gene um, is in about 85% of genetically modified plants. And so those are the two regions, the promoter and the terminator, that we're going to be searching for in this lab. The lab has three parts. On day one, we're going to isolate the DNA. On day two, we're going to amplify, which is just a fancy way of saying we're copying the genes. And on day three, we're going to view the gene copies. Uh, there's two big biotech um, protocols that we're going to be trying out in this. Um, that is PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, and gel electrophoresis. And you can find out more about those through other videos that I'm gonna show you so that you can actually see them at work rather than just watching my screencasts. So focusing on day one, the isolate DNA day has a kind of approximately three steps to it. The first step is you've got to bring food. We have to have something to extract DNA from. That can be, um, the best thing is like fresh corn, fresh papaya, cornmeal, uh, corn meal found in like a cake mix or like jiffy cornbread mix. Uh, you could also do tortilla chips or puffed corn snacks or some kind of soy protein snack. So veggie burgers, I have gone to, you know, like a gas station and gotten really, really cheap like meat snacks, which are normally loaded with veggie-based protein instead of meat, um, and that's why they can be so inexpensive. Um, so those are all options. The next step is to grind the food up. So we need to make that food, um, those cells and the DNA inside them available to the chemical we're going to add them to. And so you're going to grind them up in a mortar and pestle. Um, so it's just a this is a very common grinding device. If you grind spices at home, you might have one. And the big thing about grinding the food is to add the proper volume of water uh, at the right time so that you get a slurry um, and food that's very finely ground up. So, it's, so you'd be working out your frustration on that food. So it's kind of fun to grind it up. Lastly, we're going to extract the DNA, and this is a lot simpler than it seems like it should be um, because we're just going to add that slurry, an approximate or a very specific volume of that, to an InstaGene matrix, which comes from the company BioRad that creates this kit. And we're going to heat it up in a 95 degrees Celsius water bath and then add it to a centrifuge to take all the solids out. 
And so if you're looking at these microcentrifuge tubes, this is my approximate drawing of one, um, when you centrifuge it, it pulls, it creates like artificial gravity. So um, you're gonna pull all the food solids and microplastics in the instagene matrix to the bottom. And what you'll have at the top is liquid with your DNA suspended in that liquid, or at least that is the hope. When we're doing this day one part of the lab, there's only one tool that might be new to you, and it's probably not, but that is the humble, the mighty, the transfer pipette. The transfer pipette, um, you may have used it. It's got the bulb at the top. You always, I try to squeeze it before I put it in the liquid so that you don't blow bubbles and, you know, like especially when you're working with a pellet that's been suspended by a centrifuge, you don't wanna mix it back up with those bubbles. So. The transfer pipette has markings on it, so you would squeeze the bulb, place it into the liquid, and then allow the liquid to rise to the volume of your choosing. So we've got the markings on ours typically are 50 microliters, then 100, 250, 500, 750 microliters, and then when you get to 1,000 microliters, that is a milliliter. And so those are the transfer pipettes we're going to be using tomorrow and often in biology.